I can see I've got a release. Hi, welcome to this video on how to use Go Releaser. This was a requested video, and I hope that I can help to share some information on how to get started with actually releasing Golang binary artifacts and others onto GitHub. I say others as it also supports images. You can also release things like S bombs, so you can see exactly what the bill of materials has been, as well as signing your releases. There's a whole bunch more to Go Releaser, but without me just sitting here and talking about it, let's go ahead and have a look at the project. So. Firstly, as I mentioned, it's super useful for delivering binaries. It enables you to have a simplified DSL for how you describe the, the production of artifacts, uh, the architecture to use, and what targeted platforms you have. I've gone ahead and grabbed it. So if you do the installation process, you go brew tap install if you're on uh, Mac. And if you're on other systems such as Linux, you can snap install or app install it if you're on Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and figure out how to make things work. There is a quick start here, but just to save you having to watch me go through that, let's go, go to the pertinent points. I've created a GitHub repository. Now, I have a simple application. I, I, I'm apprehensive to say that. It's super simple. It just prints hello. But I have a go mod file for that application. And you can see that I have a .git directory that links it to this remote. So if I go git pull origin main, we can see that everything is ship shape. And again, if I run this program, it does very little. So I want to make a release. I think this is the best program that's ever been devised. Let's go ahead and get that onto GitHub. So first things first, we want to go go releaser. Now, if we do that, we can see that all this stuff comes up and it's not very clear what this all means. So let's break this down. First things first is it's injecting environmental variables such as your GitHub token, which you'll need to set or your GitLab token, etc. It's also looking for a config file to pick out all of the complexities that you want to identify and to work with. And then it's also checking to see if your Git is in dirty state. And then it finds that we don't actually have any tags here. So there are a lot of things to think about there. But really, as per the docs, the first thing you'll want to do is to do an init on Go Releaser. What this lets you do is it lets you create a .go releaser file, and it will also edit your .git file. Now, so your git ignore file. What's important to understand is this will put your um, git state into dirty, right? Because you have files that have been changed but not committed. Now, this is a really important thing to understand when using Go Releaser is that it wants to make sure that the state of the repository matches the latest uh, snapshot uh, and or tag. You can see that also in the documentation, there's this local only mode to test things out. What that basically is doing is two things. It's saying use the snapshot as the current state, so the current head locally, and remove the release directory. So let's go ahead and do that and just see what happens. So there's a bunch of stuff that's just appeared. This is a quick build because not much is going on, which is great. You'll see that at the top we get a warning that there aren't any tags um, to base a snapshot on. And so we're just using the SHA of the current commit, which is latest tagged at dot. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 007 ver. You'll see that the pipe has been disabled, there are pre-hooks that are being run, and we're getting artifacts out. So there's a lot of stuff happening right there. And also, we can see that's reflected in our directory. We've gone from having three or four simple files to now we have this huge dist directory full of things to look at. But let's go to our go releaser YAML file, because this is really the focus of this video. The first thing you'll see is that it is broken in down into um, several different objects with fields on them, and then some of those will have sub-objects. The before section is how you manage your pre-build phase, right? This could be running a script, this could be uh, modifying a file, or it could be doing these actions, such as go mod, go generate. You can comment these out, it doesn't matter you can uh, completely co uh, remove the section entirely. If you want to see more information on that, you go down to customization and you can click on build and you can start to look at some of the ways you can modify the Go Releaser YAML file. In this build section, you'll see that we have CGO enabled equals zero as an environmental variable. You can add your own environmental variables if your build depends on it and you can pass those through. You can even template 
go release it. As you'll see here, further down in the snapshot, there are certain built-in functions uh, that can be templated as well. So for example, if you want to pass into your main.go the version, so it can say hello from version 2 or version 1, you can do that through an environmental variable that's templated. You also see here a simplified interface to how you want to pick our target operating system in the GUS. Architecture, by default, gives you uh, AMD64, i386, and ARM64. That's just me trying to remember that off the top of my head. Archives, these are replacement directives so that the path uh, that gets produced will be modified. If we go back to our tree, you'll see that Darwin is uppercase, Linux is uppercase, and Windows is uppercase. We can remove that, we can call it something completely different. I can call it Windows Longhorn if I want to. And then the final part is checksum, snapshot, and changelog. And these are all just uh, templated defaults, configuration settings. Changelog is what files will get brought into um, be part of the changelog. And we can come back into that a little bit later. I want to get an example up and running. So we know that if we go go releaser snapshot rm dist, we are able to effectively build locally. But that's not the point of this, right? We want to get something up onto GitHub. So what I need to do is I will check to see if there's anything in my diff. There isn't. Great. So I'm going to git tag A and create my first tag. I'm going to call this uh, preparing for our first go releaser release. With that tag created, all we need to do now is go releaser. But you'll see that we have two files that haven't been added. Because if you remember, even though the diff doesn't show a change, we do have files in the directory. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go git tag d, just to rewind that tag to remove that. Git diff is still going to show nothing. So what I want to do is git add. I'm going to have to say added my initial releaser files. And this really is the gotcha, I think, for a lot of folks, is they just um, go through the, the steps and don't quite um, put together that actually you need to have your directory in a clean state that matches head and that the snapshot and the shard, the commits, um, are, are matching. You can't commit after you've made a tag, is another way of saying it. So let's go ahead and push that remotely as well, just so that we're synchronized between the local copy and the remote. Then I should see this now showing up here. So now we're in a good place. I can say git tag. I'm going to have to go through the same ceremony of saying my first release, mark2. And now I'm going to try creating a release. Now because I have that dist directory you see here, it's saying, hey, you can't do that. You've already got this directory. So in this case, I don't need to remove my tag and change my commit history. I can just apply rm dist on the end of it. So exactly the same thing is going to happen as the first time we ran it, except for you'll see that here we get less warnings because it's OK with using uh, the semver of 0.01 rather than what's just on the head of the local copy. You'll also see that after the archiving, it is now doing upload, which is exciting. So we're in the upload phase. This is because offline from this video, I added in my GitHub token uh, into my environmental variables. And that is part of the uh, getting set up phase. So if you go to the docs, you can look more in detail at how to add your, uh, your remote to that. So for example, here you can see GitHub token. But what it's doing is it has my token, it understands my repository. And so now if I do a refresh, I can see I've got a release. And what's really nice is that the changelog has the two uh, commits that I added. And you can see that I have both ARM64, i386, and x86-64 builds. Awesome. I just want to show you a couple more features of Go Releaser today because it's super powerful and it doesn't need to be um, shown exhaustively. You can go away and find that out. But if you want to use stuff like S-bombs and other components, you can go down to customization 
and you go down to cataloging artifacts, you'll see that you can add in uh, archive SBOMs. I believe this uses SIFT, so you can see SIFT here. Now, for me, I would have to install SIFT onto uh, MacOS. Now, the way to do that is to use the installer. So let's go grab that. And what SIFT uh, allows you to do is to generate that SBOM. Oh, and I'll just uh, modify this because I believe that I need to have administrative permissions to do so. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put that in my uh, local directory. So I'm going to say, hey, SIFT, go into my slash users code, and I'm going to add that in uh, just there. And what I'll do is I, for this, this video, I as well just update my local path to put it in there. So you can see there it's installed with SIFT. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go echo, um, export dollar path, or path equals dollar path. And this is just to get around not wanting to install it with admin permissions. And then we can see it's installed. Okay, great. So I've got SIFT. I'm going to go back to the GoRelease docs. I'm going to add SBOM at the bottom here. Now, we have to remember that by even modifying this file, we are changing the history on the repository. So I'm going to say add. Again, I'm on main, main branch, which is probably not advisable. So you want to go on a, a feature release branch. So I'm going to say added SBOM support. How cool. There we go. So I'm going to push that remotely. I'm going to check. If I go back to my Go Releaser CN Skunkworks, and we can see that we've just had a change. At this point, we now create our new tag. Uh, and that would be git tag, not go release a tag. There we go. Uh, adding SBOM support. And now we're going to run go release a rm dist because we have a directory locally. And so what we can see happening is we're getting these exciting new files being created. Dot SBOM. And they're all being uploaded. If we go now to v2, we can see that we have some new files. And if I go to the Darwin ARM64.sbomb, I can download that. And I'm going to choose an application to view that with. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my download path. Um, if I can find it, let's have a quick look. Let's find it. There we go. And I'm going to cat that file. And you can see that we have now the bill of materials for our awesome project that we just built. So that was a really quick tour of how to use Go Releaser. We created a simple GitHub repository. We connected that repository locally. We added a Go Releaser file with some basic changes to the configuration. We produced a build, packaged those artifacts, pushed them up to that repository. I showed you also how to add something like SBOM support, which is super simple, and I create a new tag from that and push that up. And so suddenly you've now got these rich new artifacts in your repository. I hope that was interesting. Please do let me know if you have any questions or comments. The Go Release docs are super mature. I mean, this project speaks for itself why it's so popular. Uh, it's really easy to use. The gotcha really is around changing things in the configuration and also realizing that the configuration for Go Releaser itself is versioned in your Git repository. So you also do need to make sure that you're committing those changes first before you are trying to build a release. And of course, remember, you have Go Releaser dash dash snapshot dash dash RM dist that lets you take a local uh, working copy of whatever head is at to play around with it as well. Thank you so much. Goodbye.